In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue to celebrate this day, the Feast of Transfiguration. And one of the mysteries of this feast is that it is the revelation of the kingdom of God come in power. You recall in the Gospel, our Lord Jesus had said, to his disciples right after he spoke of his own impending crucifixion and he told them if anyone would want to follow him they would need to take up their cross to do so he said that there were some disciples standing there who would not taste death till they saw the kingdom of God come in power and so on the day of transfiguration the Lord takes three disciples with him to the mount, climbs the mountain with them. Peter, James, and John behold the Lord transfigured before them. This is indeed the kingdom of God come in power. This is what it looks like. The fullness of Christ's divinity revealed to the world, but also the fullness of humanity, the full glorification of the human being in God, a full participation in the divine life, what was originally intended in creation, the very purpose and potential of creation. And so here in this great feast, we have the fulfillment, the coming of the kingdom of God in power. Often in our spiritual life, this is what we look for, isn't it? This is what we hope to find. We come to church, we prepare for and receive the holy mysteries. We pray, we fast, we, we keep our daily rule of prayer, we read the scriptures, we offer ourselves in sacrifice for service to the world. We do all of these things with a hope somewhere in the back of our minds, if not the forefront, that we too will see the kingdom of God come in power, that we will behold the light that transfiguring light and see the face of God himself shining upon us. How rare indeed that is. The Lord said some of those disciples with him would see that before they tasted death. And in the history of the church there are, there are examples, countless ones really, of saints who have beheld that light who have seen the kingdom of God come in power. But there are many more people who have come and lived and died, lived faithful lives, lives of service, lives of, of faith and hope, lives of sacramental participation, liturgical worship, ascesis, and who have never seen the kingdom of God come in power in this way yet. We know this is what we will behold. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew that we've been reading, it is about the coming of the Kingdom of God. We've reflected on this before, and it looks sometimes like this, this glory, this light. Other times, it looks different. Other times, as we saw in the early chapters of Matthew, it's the healing of the sick. It's the transformation of lives. It's the blind who can see, the lame who can walk, the deaf who can hear. It's prostitutes who have come to worship God, tax collectors who leave behind their booth and follow after the Lord Jesus. This too is the coming of the kingdom of God. A little less impressive, perhaps, a little less overwhelming, but nevertheless, the new life of God's kingdom coming in our midst. The end of this morning's gospel, the Lord encounters some children. Children come forward and whether it's their parents instigating or their own natural curiosity and wonder who is this man that people are thronging after, but the children come forward for the Lord's blessing. And the disciples, of course, being well, like most adults, want 
to make sure that there's not too much disruption. Things have to proceed north. There's an agenda, right? There's, there's uh, an order for the day. We mustn't disrupt the Lord's schedule. He's got an appointment in the next town over. Surely we don't have time for this. Whatever the case may be, the children are rebuked and their parents with them. No, no, the Lord doesn't have time for such as this. And the Lord says, no, allow them to come. Allow them to come forward, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. In Mark, in the same episode, we read something further. Whoever does not welcome the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter into it. Whoever does not welcome the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter into it. And we read that and we hear that, we sometimes think of that earlier chapter in Matthew, it's actually chapter 18, we read from 19 this morning, when there's another episode with the children. This was when another of those times when the disciples were debating another one of their great questions, who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God? This is the sort of thing they would think about as they traipsed from town to town watching the Lord bring the kingdom of God into their midst. Well, who's going to be the greatest, they mused. And the Lord calls to him, specifically a child, and says, unless you turn and become as a child, then you will not enter into the kingdom of God. So when we hear these words, unless you welcome the kingdom of God as a child, we think of this, we think we must be like children. And that's true, of course, and children have all kinds of traits which lend themselves to what precisely the Lord would want from us, right, as we receive the kingdom of God. Our kind of unfettered trust. You know, a child has to trust. A child has to trust for his or her very survival, right? A child has to put his or her trust in an adult to be fed, to be clothed. And that is the kind of deep and abiding trust that we need to have if we are to receive the kingdom of God. Children are also filled with curiosity and wonder and awe. You know, there's nothing so insignificant that a child can't find something to wonder about, something to find that is absolutely awesome. And most of us would be looking at it thinking, okay, yeah, that's a storm drain, or that's a tree, or that's a bird, or something. But for a child, it's, it's magical. It's filled with, with meaning. And that's what we are to be like as we receive the kingdom of God. Children are also, any of you who are parents know, fairly persistent. Having a child is like, well, it's like kind of inviting a used car salesman into your house because they will never stop trying to persuade you of something and sell you on something. And that persistence, too, is something which we could use in the spiritual life. So all these things are things that, unless we welcome the kingdom of God, as children, with these traits, we will not receive it. But there's something ambiguous about that phrase, because it could also mean something quite different. Unless we receive the kingdom of God as we receive children, right? Not receiving as a child, but the way we receive children, then we will in no way enter in. And that casts a rather different complexion on this saying. Unless we receive the kingdom of God as we receive children. Well, think about that. On the one hand, we have the kingdom of God coming in its power with the glory, the uncreated light of God himself. That's what we're all after, right? I mean, truth be told, it'd be great to get up in the morning and see the uncreated light. It would solve an awful lot of our problems. It would put things in perspective. It would help us to understand the misery and suffering, the heartache, the pain of this life. And yet, the Lord says, unless you receive the kingdom of God as you receive children. Well, how do we receive children? They're altogether more unpredictable than the uncreated light. Right? Children, you can't predict from one moment to the next what they're going to bring you. You don't know when they're going to come or when they're going to go. You don't know what 
sort of mood or notion or fancy will take them. Raising children is to move from one kind of, you know, being in the chaos and darkness to another sort of living in a cloud. There's nothing certain. The kingdom of God is like that, the Lord says. Well, doesn't that resonate a bit more with us in our lives than the uncreated light? I mean, I'll confess now, I have yet to see it. But I've seen children, and I've experienced, indeed, the kingdom of God coming in this world like that. In fragments, in hints, in shadows. Yes, moments of great joy and happiness where you're overcome with a feeling that all in the world is right. But there are moments of great sadness and suffering, moments of pangs of childbirth, right? All of the kind of heartache that comes from receiving a child, not knowing what's going to happen one moment to the next. That's what the kingdom of God is like as it comes. It's not yet here in its fullness, and yet it's beginning here and there. And everywhere it's doing that, it's like a child. And we must welcome it the way we welcome a child, because for all the heartache and pain and suffering they bring, they also bring joy. And above all, they bring this, they bring potential. They bring a potential to, fil to fulfill what is the human destiny, which is to share in the glory of God himself to share in that divine and uncreated light. Every child, when you look into his or her eyes, you see that. It's less obvious once we get to be a bit older, unfortunately, but we must receive everyone as we receive children. And we must look for the kingdom of God in this way. It's not always going to come, you know, with a trumpet and a fanfare and a herald of angels and, and the uncreated light. It will come like it is when we have children. And when children in our, in our midst, we have to look for it very hard indeed. And yet the fullness is already there in potential. That's how we to live as Christians in this world. Not just moving from one holy place to another, expecting experiences of glory and light. There will be, I pray for all of you, moments of Mount Tabor, of transfiguration in your lives. And we can be sustained by those indeed. Moments when everything does seem right, spiritual. But there'll be far more moments of pain and suffering and misery and darkness. And that's the challenge of the Christian life, to live the life of the resurrection and of hope in the midst of that. That's the challenge every parent has with a child, to go through all of that and yet project from our hearts into their eyes and lives the glory of God himself that we take from this holy table. So dear brothers and sisters, on this, the after feast of transfiguration, let us indeed celebrate the light which shines on all, but that light which is so often hidden, veiled, and unclear, because the kingdom of God comes so often as a child. Glory to God.